can't believe we're wasting a Saturday at a job placement office. I, I know, but I mean, we need the money in order to keep the lab going. Especially since Hutch Masterson was killed after testing out his new blender while taking a bath. Just go with it. Why do we even need a lab? It's not like we're scientists or anything. We don't even use half the stuff that's in there. Because it was left to me by my great uncle Paul. And I wanted to honor his memory by keeping it running. Since when? Since Mark wrote it in the script. Yeah. You should probably just go with that too. I wonder what these people will give us. I don't know, hopefully something decent in pay. Maybe something like a detective or a secret agent or something. Uh, yeah, uh, Scott, this is job placement, not, you know, total recall. Let me get your hopes up. But why not something fun like a magician or a ventriloquist, something like that? Because we're not auditioning for a talent show. At this point, I don't care, as long as it has nothing to do with shrimp. I know I'm gonna regret asking this, but uh, what does shrimp have to do with any of this, Scott? I just have a phobia of shrimp. Wait, you're, you're scared of shrimp? Sure am. I can't stand the sight of them, dead or alive. Okay, so what's the... When I was a kid, my family and I went regularly to an all-you-can-eat buffet called the Seaman's Delight. <laughs> That's disgusting. And one time in the buffet, it was during a sumo wrestling convention, two of the peers got into an argument over pickled eels. They squared off and accidentally knocked me head first into a bucket of shrimp. I almost drowned, and thus, my fear of shrimp. <sighs> um, okay then. Right? Uh, I would think then sumo wrestlers would be your phobia. <laughs> Say lovey. <sighs> okay, wait, how come I've never heard of the story before? I was on a roll with that one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, look, whatever we end up getting, I'm sure we'll make it work. Imagine if we could pick whatever jobs we wanted. Like, awesome jobs people have in movies. Yeah, yeah. That would be, be pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. I could think of, I don't know, ten off the top of my head? Yeah, me too. Heck, I could probably count down all the jobs. Me too. <sighs> Cue the f***ing intro. Good evening, and welcome back to The Franken Zone, the show that has all the critics saying, never heard of it. I'm Jason Pritchard. I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm Mark Macrina. And yes, sad to say, we've been forced to find a new place to hang our hats now that we are no longer in the clutches of Hutch Masterson. And believe me when I say, no one was more saddened by the news than us three. Yes, it was quite a mournful period. And since then, we've been drifting from place to place, trying to get our bearings. We've also started not only thinking of jobs we need to get, but we've also been thinking about all those jobs we wish we could have. Dream jobs, if you will. Like being a circus clown. Look, we went over this before. Just because you like to put on clown makeup doesn't make you part of the circus. Tell that to the bearded fat lady. You know, not even two minutes in, so instead of just sucking it up and getting real jobs, we decided to make a list of all the awesome jobs we've seen in the movies that we only wished were real. And because none of you either asked for it or care, we're going to present you with them anyway. With this, our top 10 movie character careers that we only dreamed of having. So put down those one ads, hold off on that application, and hang up that phone call to your mom asking for money to pay off that Asian hooker you swore just gave you a massage. They'll also lick your toes and vomit oatmeal on you for an extra hundred. <clears throat> okay, let's get this over with. It's good to be back. Number 10, Snape, the potions master from Harry Potter. It's 
it's one thing to want to be a teacher at a school. You get to inspire students, help them achieve excellence, and open their minds to new experiences. And you get your summers off. But imagine also being a teacher that deals with magic potions. Then you would be Severus Snape. And what an awesome gig that would be. You get to learn all sorts of enchanted concoctions, talk really creepy to your students while looking like a bird of some sort, and you still probably would have summers off. Of course, the downside to this is you're also that teacher that just looks evil, and when, if anything goes wrong in that school, you're automatically going to be blamed for it, which I'm sure would suck during parent-teacher conferences. Number nine, James Bond. Who wouldn't want to be this guy, let alone have that exciting job of being the quintessential secret agent? To many moviegoers, James Bond not only has the ultimate job, but also the ultimate life. Seriously, what other job finds you traveling to exotic places, meeting very interesting people, and having access to kick-ass gadgets and weaponry, all while wearing the finest in clothes and knocking back, shaken not stirred, martinis? And if you think that's not enough, just think of the health benefits. Sure, the downside is you're always risking your life, one step away from death, being shot at by evil agents or trapped by a villainous psychos wearing gold teeth. But really, is that any different than living in Texas? Take this nap in Texas, you've just been served. Number eight, Indiana Jones if it's action and adventure you want, but if you're anything at all like me, God forbid, and you hate dressing up, then maybe archaeology is more your thing. There's a bee on your head. He's back! <laughs> Never fails. And while most archaeology is tedious, slow-moving, and dusty, no one could ask for a better job in digging up the past than Indiana Jones. All right. Again, here's a guy with a job that allows you to travel across the world to some exotic places. Most of the time. Expose yourself to some exotic cuisine. Most of the time. Witness some of the most spectacular and awe-inspiring miracles. Most of the time. And of course, meet some very interesting people. Uh, most of the time. Well, okay, let's face it, there are a few pitfalls along the way. Sword fights, booby traps, getting shot at by Nazis, and maybe the worst of it all. But again, on the plus side, you don't have to dress up. You get to wear a cool hat, like me, and my personal favorite, whip people. But not in any kinky way or anything. No, Daddy. No more peanut butter. <sighs> What happened? Number seven, president. This one's a bit more abstract. Rather than focusing on just one character, we decided to simply look at some of the pros and cons of being a president in the movies. Mainly, the thing we have to remember is that unlike actual presidents, most of them are pretty likable. Like we ever make political jokes on this show. No, we don't. But let's you face it, folks. Being the president in a movie seems a lot more fun, exciting, and whimsical. Not only are you the leader of the free world, but as the president, you could find yourself a helpless romantic, both smooth and suave. Or fighting off aliens, hell-bent on destroying the planet. Or just kicking terrorist butt Harrison Ford style. Get off my plane. Whichever the outcome, one thing is clear. Movie presidents kick a lot of patriotic ass. Okay, so occasionally you get the murderous president. Or also the president trying to defend his planet but not doing that good of a job. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! 
But fortunately, in the real world, all of our presidents are anything but crazy and untrustworthy. <laughs> oh. Come on, yeah. come on, come on. If Saturday Night Live said that, you'd all be cackling like hyenas. Mm. Number six, a Skynet employee. Not all the jobs on here are about action or adventure. Some are more subtle, quiet, and subdued. Take, for example, being an employee at Skynet, the beloved company from the Terminator movies. There's nothing more exciting than working for a company whose mission is to bring the future to the present through state-of-the-art technology a place where one can work themselves up in the world of inspiring vision and imagination, as well as revolutionary creativity, until the killer cyborgs come along. Okay, so yeah, one little mistake and you're part of a global apocalypse caused by your own advanced weaponry, but every profession has their little risks. Okay, maybe a few big ones too. Still, as an employee of Skynet, not only do they have casual Fridays, cool-looking hallways, and top-notch security, but also all the lollipops you can eat. Yes, Skynet seems to be the sort of laid-back job where even a schlub like me could find a home in. A job where the mood is always kind, easygoing, and filled with friendly faces. Again, until the killer cyborgs come. Number five, the bartender from Mos Eisley Cantina. Let's face it, folks, when it comes to the ultimate job, all the spying, digging, politicizing, evil roboting, and yes, even a greeter at Walmart, fail to compare to this next career choice. I'm talking, of course, about a job opportunity one could only acquire in a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars. And what better occupation to have in the Star Wars universe than... Working for the Rebels. Working for the Empire. Being the bartender at Mos Eisley Cantina. I think I'd rather be in the band. But honestly, were I living in this universe of Death Stars, lightsabers, and Jedis, I'd probably find myself in the outskirts, away from political affairs. And what better place to earn a living than as a bartender in the middle of the most wretched hive of scum and villainy? Think of all the interesting characters you'd meet, different species you'd discover, not to mention a variety of intergalactic cocktails you could get hammered on. Granted, every now and then someone gets killed over money or just because they don't like the person. He doesn't like you. I'm sorry. I don't like you either. But on the plus side, there never seems to be a dull moment, and plus, you get to hang with this guy. So go ahead and run to your X-Wings and start your Jedi training while piggybacking a Muppet. Me? I'll be kicking back with my band of anus head looking musicians not serving droids. Hey, the job was good enough for B. Arthur. Still better than Jar Jar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number four, Ghostbuster. While Mark prefers to hang with aliens, I, on the other hand, prefer ghosts, especially if that means landing one of the coolest jobs ever as a Ghostbuster. I like to hang with elves. Most of the time they put marshmallows in my cereal. That's good, Scott. Very cool. Dude, you're like nine feet tall. Everyone's an elf to you. True. One day, you're fighting old librarians and mutant canines to giant marshmallow men and demigods that look like any Lennox on crack. Plus, you spend your slow days running paranormal experiments, checking up on your tank full of captured ghosts, and who could forget the fire pole? When can we move in? You've got to try this pole! Not to mention being able to drive around in a hearse, have lunch with your own ghost mascot, and sport a fancy unlicensed nuclear war accelerator. Not to mention the fact that you're face to face with the supernatural and forces of darkness, but hey, I ain't afraid of no ghost, but I is afraid of no paycheck. Number three, Jack Skellington. Of course, instead of busting ghosts, you could always just live among them. Maybe even serve as a sort of public official for them. If that's the case, perhaps the job for you is a political position in the town of Halloween, just like the one and only Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, so while Jack isn't officially the mayor of Halloween Town, it's clear he pretty much runs the show. Even the mayor himself has admitted to this. And what a job that must be, your whole life 
while Anoff is concentrating on one thing and one thing only, Halloween. And if you're like me and it's your favorite time of year, well, this is a dream job come true. Your neighbors are werewolves, witches, and vampires, and your first lady is a woman made out of leaves, and imagine what council meetings must be like when you have delegates made of mud and slime, not to mention the fact that you would probably develop a lovely singing voice. Oh, somewhere deep inside of these bones and emptiness began to grow. To me, Mayor of Halloween Town is certainly a way to go. You're basically in charge of a Disney version of hell. You command the forces of darkness. You can lead armies of the undead, the entire underworld, bowing at your whoa, feet. Whoa, whoa, Scott. I think you're getting a little carried away. Uh, this is a kid's movie, you know. Are you calling me stupid? Because let me tell you something. Be on your head. I got it. Number two, The Exorcist. Okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You have your medication again? <sighs> I didn't get them. What, he gets to tell all the fat jokes. So that, and who in their right mind would ever want to be an exorcist? Well, believe it or not, I have now and again thought about grabbing onto this opportunity. Wait a minute, when has anybody ever asked you to do an exorcism? I'd be surprised at how many people have asked me to release some evil. The only evil you release is after you scarf down a whole bag of chili Fritos. Hey, Scott, there's a bee on your head. No, no, no more. Just move on. Anyhow, yes, unlike the other character professions on this list, an exorcist doesn't sound all that appealing. I mean, you spend your nights getting vomited on, have things flying at you, not to mention some of the filthiest language ever thrown at you. I mean, words that would make your head spin. Oh, Jesus Christ! who lives and reigns. <sighs> so why in God's name would anyone want to go into this line of work? Well, frankly, because of God. I mean, think of it. If there are demons roaming around in little children causing them to scream more obscenities than drunk Mel Gibson, well, then it would stand to reason that there is in fact a God. And if that's the case, I mean, is there a better boss to work for? Sure, the work sucks, but imagine the benefits. Imagine the credit you build. Imagine what a Christmas bonus would be like. So I say, if you're going to have to work hard labor for the man, it might as well be the man. And now we come to the number one character careers. And since each of us has our own ultimate dream job, we figured we'd split this number into three parts. So in a sense, this is our number one in thirds or something. I don't know. We're all bad yeah. at math. That's why we do this. That's pretty That's true. true. And since mine is the best, I will go first. Yeah, this ought to be good. To me, the best character career is piloting one of the lions that make up Voltron. Huh. What do you know? It's actually good. Of course, what usually makes a job fun is the people you work with. Not that I would know. Uh, Scott, we're sitting right here. I know. And when you're part of a team, an important team, you can't help but feel a certain sense of self-accomplishment. And what better job to get that feeling than being a part of a team of robotic lions that when bonded together create the greatest warrior in the galaxy. Of course, you risk life and limb when it comes time to fight, and you have to have total faith in your fellow pilots who are working other parts of his body. His arms, his legs, probably his Voltron junk too. I don't know, I'm not too familiar with Voltron's bathroom habits. They'll probably cover that in the training. You couldn't operate Voltron's nostrils. Not if they're as large and cavernous as yours. B. You're mine! <sighs> I'm not supposed to do that. Anyhow, moving on, my ultimate car- I'm drooling. Say, Scott. Mm -hmm. No, no. Don't. Jay, there's a bee on your head. Anyhow, moving on. My ultimate character career is a bit more down to earth. Well, sort of. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in the cosmos with alien beings. No, my work is really more of a walk in the park. Jurassic Park. 
Yes, sir, for me, there would be no greater job than to work in Jurassic Park, to care for creatures long thought extinct, to study and explore a time long forgotten, to know that at any moment a T-Rex could come crashing in and swallow me whole. Well, okay, there would be some hazardous risk, of course. But on the plus side, there seems to be an abundant amount of jello and ice cream. Also, in terms of getting eaten, I just make sure I was one of those smart employees who would get the hell on that damn boat when Samuel L. Jackson told me to. Ladies and Thanks, gentlemen, Steve. last shuttle leaving for the dock leaves in approximately five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now. Yeah, but what if you get put on the cleanup crew? That is one big pile of shit. Right. Look, we share a bathroom with that guy. Hey, good point. Sorry, what? Nothing. No. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, right. well, as for me, basically, I don't want a career of any kind. Why? Because I don't like to work. I hate working. I hate having to work. Having to show up at any place against my will, following a routine not of my design, no matter what they dangled in front of me. Bottom line, a job where I don't have total control is not for me. And it wouldn't be an issue if I were this guy. My dream career is being the smoking man from the X-Files. There's nothing more appealing to me than having all the power. Everything would be by my hand. Worldwide events and scandals, international goings-on, espionage, Watergates, impeachments, government conspiracies, extraterrestrial affairs, monumental historical events, and even Oscar and Super Bowl outcomes. I'm working on next month's Oscar nominations. Any preference? I couldn't care less. What I don't want to see is the Bills winning a Super Bowl. As long as I'm alive, that doesn't happen. I wouldn't just be a man in black. I would be the man in black, working from the shadows, the people of the world, my puppets. I can kill you whenever I please. But not today. And all I would have to do is sit back and occasionally have to sit in a fancy room with comfortable chairs and the best brandy money can buy and speak cryptically with other strange men in suits. In other words, why work when I have the power to have everyone else do the work for me? Um, you don't smoke. Or do I? No. No, no. no. You don't. No. no, I don't. So what kind of jobs do they offer here anyway? Well, job placement finally found some temporary work for us, which turned out to be a cleanup crew during the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse. See, this is what happens when you make jokes to the agency about not getting a dead-end job, Scott. I just thought they'd have a sense of humor. Okay. This is more like Sorry. a sense of irony, really. I don't see how ironing has anything to do with this. When exactly did you get so stupid? Somewhere between episodes five and six. Actually, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. I think right. so. Uh, to top it all off, our boss is now a creepy old guy who thinks he's a pirate. It's actually Arg! Enough of the casual and you scurvies! Get out with your dead and clean it or you'll walk the plank! Sorry, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Shut it! Good idea. <clears throat> Hoist the sail, he hardies! There's zombies ahead! No, I can't believe he used to be our high school art teacher. Actually, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> what? Ah! Hey, you guys think this job has a dental plan? Shut up and keep going. Jesus. Oh, 